All right, in this video, I want to talk about evaluating some trig functions using the reference angle. But before we do that, sort of uh, the thing I remember to help me relate this reference angle back. So first thing here, I've got a little uh, circle of radius 1, just one quarter of it here, just in the first quadrant. Um, again, you know, if this is a circle of radius 1, it would hit the x-axis at the point 1, 0. It would hit the y-axis at 0, 1. Again, at the top, at the y-axis, we're at the angle pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. Equivalently, I've got the angle pi over 3 radians, or 60 degrees, pi over 4, 45 degrees, and pi over 6, 30 degrees. Again, each one of these angles would hit the circle um, in different places. So I've got the points, you know, the angle pi over 3 radians are 60 degrees. That would hit the circle. It turns out the coordinates are 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And again, you can justify this, you know, using a little bit of geometry. Um, at pi over 4, again, we've got the point listed. And at pi over 6 or 30 degrees, we've got the point listed. So the thing I remember, again, is for any angle theta, the way I think about cosine of theta to me, cosine of theta is just going to be the x-coordinate on that circle. Sine of theta is going to be the y-coordinate on that circle. So, for example, if somebody said evaluate, you know, again, cosine of pi over 6, the first thing I do is find the angle pi over 6. Okay, that's the first thing that I do. So there's pi over 6, all right, um, the point root 3 over 2 comma 1 half, that's the point that goes with it. Whatever the x-coordinate is, that's what cosine of pi over 6 equals. Cosine of pi over 6 would be root 3 over 2. Uh, sine of pi over 6, that has to do with the y-coordinate. So I'd say, well, sine of pi over 6 is just going to be 1 half. <coughs> All right, so let's do at least a couple examples here. Um, so let's evaluate cosine of 210 degrees here. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually find that reference angle. So let's see, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think, well, 210 degrees. If we go halfway, uh, that would be 180 degrees. Um, if we go a little bit further, that would put us um, at 210 degrees. I've got a little, got a little twisted there. And again, the reference angle is just this uh, angle between the x-axis and the terminal, uh, this terminal ray. Well, uh, the difference between 210 degrees and 180 degrees would simply be 30 degrees. So it says this reference angle inside of here, uh, this angle is simply going to have measure 30 degrees. Okay, so now I think, uh, okay, it has something to do with uh, 30 degrees. So cosine of 210 degrees, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into sort of uh, something that's equal. Uh, I can't just say it's cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, so somehow we're going to replace the original angle with the reference angle, but okay, these aren't exactly correct because uh, now you have to think about the sine. So I'm thinking, is it positive or is it negative uh, for cosine? Well, uh, cosine of 30 degrees, again, we're in the first quadrant. Everything in the first quadrant is going to be a positive angle. Excuse me. Well, it'll be a uh, have a positive sign associated with that angle. Um, cosine in quadrant three, though, cosine since that has to do with the x coordinate, it's going to be negative, and actually, sine is also negative. So, since cosine is going to be negative over there, I need to uh, basically change the sign. So, cosine of thirty degrees. Now I can go back to my little my little circle here. So I say, okay, where's 30 degrees? Oh, okay, it's pi over 6. We already were talking about that. Cosine of 30 degrees is, again, whatever the x-coordinate is. So the x-coordinate's root 3 over 2. So it says cosine of 210 degrees is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. And again, that makes sense. You know, If you think about the x-coordinate on the circle, wherever it hits, um, certainly that's going to have a negative... Uh, there's going to be a negative x-coordinate there. So... Uh, let's do one more here at least. Let's do tangent of negative 45 degrees. Okay, so all right. So again, I'm just going to think about reference angles. So tangent of negative 45 degrees. Okay, well, negative 45 degrees. We would simply be going uh, down into quadrant four. 
the reference angle here is pretty easy. I mean, if we went from uh, 0 degrees and negative 45 degrees to put us in quadrant 4, the angle in between the, uh, the positive x-axis there and our, uh, our terminal ray, that would be simply 45 degrees inside of there, degree measure. So tangent of negative 45 degrees is, we're, again, we're just going to replace the angle that originally we wanted with the reference angle. So now I'm going to evaluate instead, I'm going to evaluate tangent of, well, 45 degrees. Okay, so tangent of 45 degrees. Now I have to be careful again. I, I need to think tangent of 45 degrees, I know for sure that's going to be positive because I'm in the first quadrant. Okay, so now I go back to my circle here, tangent of 45 degrees, that's going to be the first quadrant. Well, tangent of negative 45 degrees, uh, again, that puts you in quadrant 4. Is tangent there positive or negative? Well, tangent is the ratio of the y-coordinate to the x-coordinate. The y-coordinate in quadrant 4 is going to be uh, negative. The x-coordinate is going to be positive, so tangent should be negative down here in quadrant 4. So that means I need to include this negative sign on there. Okay, so now I'm just trying to evaluate the tangent of 45 degrees by using, uh, again, my, my stuff that I know in quadrant 1. So in quadrant 1, I simply say, okay, where's 45 degrees? There it is. The value, remember, tangent is defined to be sine of the angle over cosine of the angle, which in this case would be square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. You could flip and multiply, do all that stuff. To me, if you have a number divided by itself, it just gives you 1. So it says uh, we're going to be left with negative 1, and that's going to be the value for tangent of negative 45 degrees. So again, kind of the basic idea. We'll do the other two here in a separate uh, video. Again, the basic idea is you're taking the original angle, replacing it with its reference angle, and again, you know, everything, you, the reference angle always falls in the first quadrant. So the, these are always going to end up being positive numbers. Kind of the idea you have to think about again is just based on which quadrant I'm in, would it become negative or would it, you know, stay positive? So either one can happen. That's kind of the other thing you have to think about. So, all right, um, I hope this makes some sense. Hopefully the other two examples will help uh, pull it together a little bit more.